Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. The Blue Jays have secured their first series win, and it's their first time getting consecutive wins. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everybody, to Locked On Blue Jays. I'm your host, Braden Wasco, with co-host Carter First, our Twitters, Braden 5 Wasco, Carter First 2. And we've noticed a lot of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel. Make sure you drop that subscription button. It really helps us out, puts us at the top of your guys' feed, so you can see all the Blue Jays news, updates, game recaps, and everything coming to you uh, straight from YouTube. Or you can follow us on our other platforms, wherever you get your podcasts, also on TikTok and Instagram at Locked On Blue Jays. We have won. The Blue Jays have won their first consecutive games and their first series. So it's a good day to be a Blue Jays fan. It's a it's an exciting time. The bats have finally started to heat up. Carter, out of this game, what's your biggest takeaway? Is it the bats? It's just nice to get some consistency. Finally, this offense is showing that maybe it's not as fraudulent as I thought it is. Because over those first 10 games of the season, it was very hard not to overreact about the Toronto Blue Jays offense. I mean, we had three people over hitting or hitting over 200. It's tough not to, uh, it's tough to get excited about that, to say the least. Because uh, usually uh, you have Bradley Zimmer numbers. He was hitting just below 200. So the fact that over half of this team was hitting over 200 for any time of the regular season was definitely a problem for the Toronto Blue Jays. But then you get a good bounce back start from Chris Bassett. Again, that's something we're always going to have. I'm mostly focused on these bats. You get an IKF three for four day. Are you kidding me? I'll take that from uh, IKF being the eighth spot in the lineup. So uh, yeah, just uh, some overall offense up and down the order. George Springer had a couple hits today. Boba Shett obviously launched that home run. So it's just nice to see the bats going again for uh, two consecutive days. Yeah, so the Blue Jays take a 5-3 to three victory over the Mariners today. Uh, of course, they took the 5-2 victory yesterday. The Hound on the mound was dealing. An absolutely electric day from him as he went. Hold on, I'm just pulling up the stats here quickly. Uh, he went six and two-thirds inning, five hits, one run, one earned run, uh, eight strikeouts, four walks, and he gave up one home run as well. So good day overall from him, Carter. Uh, Yeah, the consistency is the biggest part. That's what we've preached about. This team needs to be more consistent. It's great when you just go out there and score 14 runs in one game, but then the next three games, you only score two. So I would much rather take these 5-3 victories or 5-2 victories over a, you know, one blowout here and there. I think, I you know, just as a Blue Jays fan, it gets me excited when we can actually win back-to-back games and, and the bats look good for two games. I will give a little bit of a a precursor on that IKF three for four day. The hits that he did have weren't good. You got to get behind IKF. I mean, that double into the gap wasn't too bad. No, that was good. But then he had, he had two blue pokes that were just like, he was defeated by those pitches and he just got. IKF just uh, taking the blue Jays on from last year. I know opening day, George Springer, especially uh, the Toronto bloop Jays just uh, taking that uh, to heart. So uh, good to see IKF embrace the Toronto blue Jays. But yeah, with Chris Bassett, I've said it on this podcast many times. If you score three, four runs with this Toronto Blue Jays offense, with how good our pitching is, you're going to win the majority of games. And we see it today. Chris Bassett only one earned run given up. They really wanted to get him that seven innings pitch. Him throwing 115 pitches this early in the season was a little bit of a surprise to me. But again, I mean, you roll with your guys that Chris Bassett is dealing. You might as well let him uh, finish off the inning if he's feeling good. So, again, nice to see Chris Bassett with a little bit of a bounce-back start. Again, if you were worried about Chris Bassett, you haven't been watching True on a Blue Jays baseball. This guy's been a vet. He's been doing it uh, at a high level for a very long time. Only 34 years old. 34 usually seems like you're getting to the end of your career in most sports. But Chris Bassett, I think, is pitching better than ever. Obviously, put posting 200 innings pitch last season still looking great again got Toronto Blue Jays are lucky enough to have a walk up for this year and next year so again I think I've said this on the podcast before but we all always seem to be we're very lucky to have this bullpen to say the least we're very lucky to have this pitching staff I think it gets overlooked a ton and it's not going to be here forever like I said Chris Bassett two more years you got Jose Brios for a long time you got Kevin Goss for three more years so we do get to enjoy it and we should enjoy it while it's here because there has been a history of some not so good pitching staffs on the Toronto Blue Jays. 
So it's always nice that you only really have to rely on one side of the baseball and you can pretty much throw pitching on the back burner for last season and all of this season. Yeah, no, the, this, the staff has been great and it's only going to get better with the return of Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson. Uh, you know, hopefully coming soon. We haven't, I, we don't have a ton of updates on them. Carter, do you I, have any I updates? Have, I have a, actually, oh, we're just going to do it right now. Yeah, I'll, might I'll as well. pull it up here. So, yeah, we finally do have some updates on Jordan Romano, Eric Swanson, Danny Jansen, and uh, Alec Manoa. We obviously saw all of them at uh, opening day. Again, some people more deserving to be there than others, I would say. But uh, I can start on Monday here. So Jana was taking BP on the field with the Blue Jays on Monday, hitting off Vila Machines and catching bullpens. Joey Votto, actually a guy we haven't talked about in a little bit, has began hitting off a tee in Florida over the weekend. And the guys that uh, are getting very close to returning. So it looks like Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson are both expected to pitch on Thursday in AAA Buffalo. So if that goes well, by the end of the weekend, we might have our complete bullpen back, which would be pretty scary based off how we've been pitching so far. Again, Trevor Richards today, a little bit of a hiccup. But again, when you're when you're pitching as often as Trevor Richards has had to pitch these first yeah. few games so far, obviously picking up the slack for our higher leverage guys that aren't pitching, I'm not reading into that too much. Again, it's early on in the year. I try not to overreact at the start of the year. The Jays made it pretty tough with how they played the first 10 games. But again, I think we're getting better. We're getting closer to regular Blue Jays baseball. Again, you're getting people. Now you have eight guys hitting over 200 compared to having three throughout the first 10 games. Obviously, 200 is not a very big plateau to overcome. Usually, it's the 300 plateau. So I think we'll get better. We'll get more regular numbers in the next few weeks. And hopefully, that can come with a lot of offense because we sure did not get that first 10 games. Hopefully, we can get that for the rest of this Mariner series. And we do have the Colorado Rockies coming to town as well. Not a great pitching staff there. So hopefully, we can keep the runs coming up for the entirety of the season. And hopefully, it's not the same as last year with this offense. Yeah, two things I want to get into just off of what you said. Uh, Trevor Richards, uh, yeah, he's been pitching a ton lately. And yeah, he gave up the home run today. But honestly, his changeup looked disgusting. He was being able to locate that thing. He's putting it in great spots. Um, yeah, I think it was a really good day from outside of the the, the walk and then the, the bomb. I mean, you, it, that's going to happen once in a while, especially when you are pitching as much as he is. Uh, I did want to also say we will get into, like, start to get into the numbers more so with these guys, uh, you know, through the first 10 games plus. It's just there's there's not a ton to really go but off of. It, it's the first ten. You don't want to you don't want to start spitting numbers out when it's it might not be the case coming down the stretch. So um, it, on Friday's episode, where we are, we'll be joined by Skylar Peters as well on another Friday edition of uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to name it something at this point. He seems to always join us on Fridays. Well, we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll ask him. He can uh, name his own segment. Uh, probably yeah. something to do with gambling, knowing him, but. Uh... We'll, we'll have to talk to him in the next coming days. We'll figure something out. Yeah, so Pistol Pete uh, will be by, and we will, uh, yeah, go over some of the numbers from this past series and the, the first 10 games as well. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we just don't want to overreact with the numbers, give you guys the numbers, and then, you know, <laughs> have everybody lose their minds over how bad the numbers are. So, you know, and, and baseball, like I, I always say, you can look at the numbers, but baseball's a lot to do with the eye test I, I can't stand when people go too heavily into the numbers because baseball that there's little things that that make the difference uh so i i'm not a true believer in just looking at statistics you gotta you gotta use your own brain use your own thoughts and and use your own eyes well and just um, going over today like you said you said ikf with a couple of bloop singles that stat line's pretty misleading you've had david schneider's stat lines last year boba shed all these players that have go 0 for 4, but they have four lineouts. Again, yeah. pretty productive at bats, but you're not getting hits that would normally fall. And then your IKF, you get a couple lucky ones today. That's how baseball is. And that's why you can't always read into the stats. They say that they do are supposed to even out uh, over the course of a season. But as we see, that obviously doesn't happen too much. Just look at Kevin Gosman's win totals from last season, a guy that was pretty much giving the Blue Jays, like almost handing them a free win every yeah. start. And got zero run support, so did not get a good win total. His win-loss record was not great last season. It was around 500. And just looking at that hand-picked stat, you don't think Kevin Gosman pitched that good last season. So yeah. it is the eye test for me is actually the biggest thing um, in all of baseball. You can look at these analytics. You should use analytics to back it up. But you see Ho Jose Barrio shoving in the wild card. You keep that guy in. Yeah, exactly. And even looking at today with Trevor Richards, he gives up the home run and the and the uh, the, the walk. But overall. Like he, he looked really good. And I think like 
if you were to just look at the box score, just look at the statistics, you maybe wouldn't get that. So I think that's why, you know, we hope that's why you guys come to us for some information. You know, we, we try to break down all the plays and, and, you know, you use our thoughts. We, you know, we've been two guys that have been, you know, watching, covering, playing baseball our whole lives. So, you know, we try to, we try to put our own little spin onto everything as well. So we will want, we will get into a little bit more on today's game uh, coming right up. And then after we will preview the final game of this series before the Blue Jays do get an off day on Thursday. Today's episode is sponsored by Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of betting against thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can test your skills on Price Picks this season, easily turning $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps, but you do have to get the picks right and... With me, I've been about 50-50 recently. I've uh, I'm going into more individual props so far because I've been having more success with that just based off how I've been pretty much 50-50, like I've said. So I've been fairly even so far. But what I'm going to roll with for tomorrow is I'm going – I'm strictly going with fantasy stuff moving forward for the next at least couple days because I'm, I'm trying to get dialed in in the MLB fantasy. Starting out 0-1 is not great for me. So I got to – Got to get more dialed in with this. So I have Bo Bichette more over, or sorry, more than six and a half fantasy points. I have Freddie Freeman. He's on my team. So I got to roll with him more than eight. And then Matt Chapman. I like to throw uh, some ricochet shots against X Blue Jays. So I have him less than seven for no other reason other than him being an X Blue Jay. So hopefully that hits with me. If you guys want to ride with my picks, you can download the app today and use code locked on MLB for first deposit matchup to $100. That's code locked on MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. So just continuing, uh, Carter, the one big thing I want to touch on sort of outside of the game and, and the numbers and how everybody played, how good does the stadium look? The field looks amazing with the upgrade that they did. It looks really, really good. And especially that backstop. Like the first time I had to look at that, I'm like, is this even the Rogers Center? It kind of looked like, I don't know how I felt about the TD being back there, but the outfield looks amazing. I like how there's not a lot of foul territory anymore. Cause it seemed like for some reason, the Toronto Blue Jays were always getting screwed over that, where these people were making these net grabs, like smushing their glove against the wall and someone making these catches. And then for the Blue Jays, it would just somehow try to get over the top of the netting and we wouldn't really get lucked out on that. Is it going to matter that much down the stretch? No, but I'm all for it. I like the look of it, making it more of a ballpark theme compared to the stadium that kind of Roger Center has always been. So I'm actually, I'm really liking those, uh, those renovations. And hopefully at some point in the season, we're going to be uh, in the flesh and get experience them firsthand. Yeah, we're going to have to go. Maybe, you know what, we've been trying to decide, you know, we, we want to head out to Toronto and go and go, you know, watch a series uh, or two. So maybe, maybe let us know what series you think we should go to give us one that you guys would suggest drop a comment down below uh and what what series you want us to cover from toronto because you know we will be doing maybe some some lives after or some whatever we're gonna figure some stuff out um but you know we also want it to be a series that sort of matters like we don't want to go down there and watch the colorado rockies play uh but you know maybe 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 some of the fans are backdoor rockies fans i don't know that uh, would be pretty unfortunate right now. Even the things over there aren't looking too great, I'll be honest. One of those teams that uh, you could probably say are not looking at a postseason pennant uh, this season. But again, yeah, I, I'd rather go for a uh, divisional series. Obviously, would like to see the Yankees. We always obviously talked about the Dodgers. But yeah, let us know. What do you think the best series that uh, will be hosted at the Rogers Center will be this season? One guy I wanted to talk about who, again, is I don't think being talked about a ton with all these bullpen injuries. And we did say you don't want to get into the numbers too much, but this is the only guy I am going to get into the numbers a little bit. It is still early, but I think he's deserving of this because, again, hasn't been getting talked about and is doing a role that he hasn't really done since his tenure with the Yankees, and that is Chad Green. Chad Green has pretty much been our closer for the time being with Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson out. It seemed like Jimmy Garcia has been giving that setup role. I just wanted to give him a shout-out as well because he's pitched very well this season so far against the Mariners, pitched well in that Rays series. A guy that uh, struggled a little bit last season, looking to uh, earn the respect of Toronto Blue Jays fans back a little bit again this season. But honestly, looking at his numbers from last season, it was just above a four ERA. I think it was just because this bullpen was so unbelievable. They did get overlooked, a little bit of a down year. 
but I don't think he had as bad of a year as fans remember. But going back into Chad Green, he started five games so far, a 3.18 ERA over five and two thirds innings pitched, four strikeouts. Hasn't blown any game yet. I know he gave up that one home run that uh, didn't end up mattering. I believe it was against the Mariners. Uh, yeah, just a very good start from Chad Green. Um, I, I'm curious to see what his role is going to be with the Blue Jays when Jordan Romano and uh, Eric Swanson come back. Is this the guy that is kind of your seventh inning man? Has he earned this role? Is that a guy you're going to flip with Jimmy Garcia? I know Tim Meza is obviously a guy that's going to be in that conversation. Braden, how do you uh, feel about Chad Green's role so far? And what do you see it looking like when uh, our big relievers with Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano coming back? Yeah, I, I, I think he's done really, really well. And to be honest with you, I think if you don't have Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson, he would be this team's closer. But it's it, 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 our bullpen's so good that you can't put him there because you need Jordy, you need Eric. It's just, yeah, I don't know where he's going to slot in. I could definitely see him being that seven-inning guy. But I feel like, yeah, Tim's been great. Uh, and it's going to be weird to sort of see where all these guys fall, who even sticks into the bullpen. Who's going to have to leave? It's it's going to be interesting coming up. So I think when those two guys return and we can sort of start to see a clearer picture, we'll definitely really, uh, relay that to you guys because uh, hopefully we'll start to see some changes in the next, you know, four or five days at least. So with Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson, say we'll start with Romano. Do you want him? I know he's going to make that triple A start in Dunedin. Say he that goes well, he goes – it's probably going to be just one inning of uh, of work for him. But do you want him to be thrown right back into that closing role? Or would you want, would you want to see the Jays kind of throw him in for a lower leverage just to get his feet wet for the opening day, regular season, as he hasn't played an MLB game yet this season? No, to be honest with you, I don't care. It's Jordan Romano. This guy's, this, this guy's a pro of all pros. He knows what he's doing out there. If he just doesn't feel ready, he won't come back in. And I think that same thing with the management. They know this is their one guy that they cannot rush back. So... If he's ready to go and he says he's feeling good, I fully believe him. And honestly, same thing with Swanson. As soon as he feels ready to go and management feels comfortable putting him back in, let him rip. Let him eat. These guys are professionals and and two of our best guys. So I have no, no zero worries about them whatsoever. How about yourself? I, I say the same thing. These guys have been doing it for a while. These guys have had service time in the MLB. They know their bodies better than anyone. I think they're just mostly going to take it from that Thursday start. If things aren't looking good, they aren't feeling good. I think that's going to be showcased on the stat line as well. So I think they'll learn a lot from their starts on that Thursday start. If they end up making it, it looks like they are, but it is all tentative right now. But yeah, I, I agree as well. I think uh, you just throw Jordan Romano right back into that closing role. He hasn't really done anything else with the Toronto Blue Jays. So you might as well uh, make him more at home and throw him into that ninth role. I think it might uh, be more of a, uh, of a new thing to him. If you threw him into the sixth inning and you kind of just threw him to the wolves like that, not something he's experienced as much. So I think with Jordan Amon, I think you're right. He's the best reliever on this team for a reason. He's the closer for a reason. I think you throw him right back in. Um, as for anything else, Braden, I know um, this team, like I said, a bunch of people hitting under 200 before. Now it looks like we have eight hitting over 200. So uh, still not exactly what you're looking for, but uh, we're trending in the right direction. Uh, as for anyone over the series, is there uh, anyone that's spoken out to you? I know John Schneider has finally given David Schneider a back-to-back -back start. He didn't do a ton with it, unfortunately, with uh, not the greatest matchup, but I like right in the hot hand. Is there anything else you noticed from the series? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, Justin Turner, he's proving to be one of the most uh, elite pickups that this team, well, the elite pickup that this team made in the offseason. And I think everybody sort of slept on him. And I think me and you were pretty high on JT coming to this team. We knew what role he was going to be playing. And, and honestly, he's done a fantastic job. The other guy that I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with how he's been going, which hasn't been, you know, obviously we didn't see him this game, uh, but that I, that I think is trending in that right direction is Kevin Kiermaier. I, I think I, I, I like his at-bats. He's not playing necessarily the best baseball quite yet. Um, I think he's still, you know, the stats probably don't help him out. The stats but are what, definitely not backing him up. That's why I had that. Uh, that that's right. To that, yeah, I, I think I saw he was hitting like under 100. Um, yeah, it wasn't good at all. But but the the last game that I saw, he it, it looked like his at-bats were getting better. And so maybe not a, an outstanding performer necessarily, but a guy that I think is working back in the right direction. 
Yeah, it's definitely something to watch. Like uh, Dalton Varsho, I think he had a little bit of better at bats today, considering uh, the rest of his at bats throughout the season. Is it enough for me to get back on the Dalton Varsho hype train? Not exactly yet. I think that's for me. That's sort of where I am with Kevin Kiermeyer, a guy. Again, I think I think you're right. I think his at bats have been better, but with such a lack of production so early yeah. on in the season, and a guy that. I had taking a step back, unfortunately, just the age and everything. You saw it a little bit at the end of last season. Uh, with Kevin Kiermeyer and Dalton Varsho, these are two players. I mean, with Kevin Kiermeyer, you're definitely not looking for as much offensive upside as you are with Dalton Varsho. You need Dalton Varsho to have a pulse at the plate. With Kevin Kiermeyer, this guy is slotted in as your seven hitter, I guess, this season, last season being nine. It's probably the guy on this roster that you're expecting the least amount from offensively. Yeah. And he's so good defensively too. So that's the good thing about Kevin Kiermeyer. Even if he's only hitting 230, 240, I'm going to take that when you're getting gold glove defense out of center field. That's what you brought him in to do. You didn't bring him in to bring, hit home runs. You didn't bring him in to be lead off. Whereas Dalton Varsho, you are expecting a little bit more of that power. You are expecting him to be productive offensively. So I have a lot more stake in Dalton Varsho and how he does this season, how it's going to impact the Jays compared to Kevin Kiermaier, where I'm giving him a little bit more slack. Yeah, and and don't get me wrong. I don't. I, I want to see Kiermaier do good, and I think that's why maybe I'm tuning in a little bit closer to his at-bats to see how he does. Um, but in the grand scheme of things with him, this is what sort of pains me to say is that if you're needing to put Babe in the lineup, David Schneider, you're going to probably stick him in that left field role and then probably just keep Varsho and Springer in the other two positions. And I don't think that leaves a lot of room for Kevin Kiermaier, especially if you want Ernie in as well, Vigio. Like it's it's tough to, to to fit some of these guys in, especially when they're not putting up the numbers. And I think I think Kevin Kiermaier could definitely get back to that. And that's why from his at bats lately, I've been seeing a little bit more from him. But will he get the time to really work those kinks out? I don't know. That's where I'm a little bit iffy. See, and that actually leads me into the final question I was going to ask you for this segment is that with, say, in this situation, we're going to give Dalton Varsho center field. If you want Kevin Kiermaier in your lineup, you got to put Dalton Varsho over to left field, Kevin Kiermaier in center. But then with this third base and second base, we've had 12 games now come our way. If you had to pick right now, say the playoffs start tomorrow. Again, this is a big hypothetical as we do have a ton left in the Toronto Blue Jays season. Who is your roster going into that playoff game? Without obviously without knowing pitching matchups, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, just um, yeah, just in general, who do you feel most confident about? Well, to be honest, three positions really. Left to field, be honest with you, I'm, I'm keeping I'm keeping Davis Schneider in left field. I think just any way that you can get that guy's bat in the lineup, I think he's a he's a more of a clutch hitter where if if something's on the line, you can almost rely on him, and I think he's proven that, which I think is a good thing. And, and in a playoff series, that's what you need. Um, Ernie Clement is just a base hit machine. That guy just gets on. He finds ways. He grinds out at bats. He's a, he's been really, really good. Um, and I, I really liked him on the defensive side of the game. I, I think he's been fine. I don't think he's been necessarily unbelievable, but he's been just, you know, as much as we need. So I honestly wouldn't hate throwing him over there at three. And then you slot Kevin Biggio in at two, even though I like IKF's numbers so far. But I think if I'm going to go with who I believe in, I have a little bit more faith in Kevin Vigio. Okay, and I unfortunately have to lie about this number stuff again on this podcast because I was thinking about this question as I went into it. And Kevin Vigio and IKF's numbers are like identical, which is absolutely oh. insane, actually. Which a guy, you're getting a left-handed bat, you're getting a right-handed bat. Both tag games played. They're both hitting 250 on the dot. They both have 28 at bats. They both have two runs. They both have seven hits. Uh, Kevin Vigio has one more double. And then after this, it starts getting a little bit more skewed. But I thought it was interesting how their averages and their hits just completely mirrored. So you're pretty much getting the same production out of both of these players. It just would come down to the matchup, whether you have that right-handed pitcher or the yeah. left-handed pitcher. So, so think, at the end of the day, I, I really like that. I think I think that's good. If there's one guy that we need to swap out, maybe it's the two of those. And we keep Ernie and Davis in. Now, don't get me wrong. That's that that goes back on what I said about hopefully, you know, seeing more at a Kiermaier. But if I had to pick who do I want to see more on the field, if it's David Schneider, Kevin Kiermaier, I'm going David Schneider every day of the week. So yeah, it's well, gonna be interesting. I, I, I like that lineup a ton. I had pretty much the same thing, and, and I just couldn't really decide over Kevin Biggio at IKF. I, I Again, I think you have to go Kevin Biggio just for the offensive upside in this hypothetical, but you'd really just come down to the pitching matchups. You'd probably have Kevin Kiermaier in against the uh, left-handed pitching and stuff like that. 
or right-handed pitching, sorry. So it really depend on the matchups. But uh, before we head into the next segment and this last game of the Mariners series, I just want to throw it over to our Locked On 24-7 streaming channel. With uh, March Madness uh, coming to a close, you got the NHL playoffs just around the corner. I know that the Canucks and Edmonton play this Saturday. Probably going to end up deciding that Pacific Division, so we're pretty fired up about that. But all of your sports needs, we have a ton of experts over at Locked On. But you can go over to the Locked On 24-7 streaming channel and subscribe. You can tune in at any time throughout the day. It's going to be on if you're a night owl or a morning person. Just go to Locked On Sports Today and subscribe to our first ever 24-7 streaming channel. Take care of all your vehicular maintenance needs with our partner, eBay Motors. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your vehicle, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And that's EB Motors is the sole reason why Braden was able to keep his Mini Cooper on the road. Probably uh, EB Motors did everyone else an injustice having to look at that uh, that eyesore on the road, but they were able to keep it on the road without uh, with the rust maintenance they had. Uh, I know Braden had a couple parts he needed to be replaced because that thing was a beater to say the least, but it definitely made Braden happy and. Since Braden is my friend, I was happy for him. So thank you to eBay Motors for uh, helping him out. If you guys want to get in on the eBay Motors, help keep your ride or die or alive, you can go to ebaymotors.com and eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit or only available for U.S. customers. So one quick thing just before we get into previewing the series that I forgot to mention a while back. Uh, Spencer Strider is actually on underwent MRI. Uh, I think this, I want to say, was this last week? Yeah. Uh, this anyway, was a little bit ago. Uh, I, I forgot to mention it. Um, and yeah, he is yet to be determined if he's going to be gonzoed or not. I think he might be for the season, but it's going to be interesting to witness. He's going to be at least well, gone for quite a bit of time. Shade Bieber has more MLB news. He's out for the year. That's, That's right. one of their best starters as well. So, uh, yeah. Some injuries, hopefully knock on wood, can avoid the Jays as we've already had a few of them in spring training. Uh, yeah, Garrett Cole. I mean, there's there's a few shots. Shane McClanahan. There's a, there's a couple of big starters in this division that are already gone. Hopefully no other MLB players are hurt. Obviously, injuries are a part of the game. But you definitely don't want to win or get an easier uh, line against a different team just based off injuries. You want them to have their best players available just so there's no excuses for Yankees fans when the Toronto Blue Jays run them. And, and this is an interesting piece, actually, that um, maybe we'll get into more on another episode. Uh, just the fact that the pitch clock seems to be affecting some of these guys. And there's been a lot of complaints on, on you know, over overtaxing pitchers. And that's why there's so many pitcher injuries happening right now. So I think this is maybe a question. Maybe we'll even throw this to Skylar Peters on Friday as well. Have a little bit of a conversation on this. Because I think it is a very interesting topic. Because... Yeah, sometimes you you know a lot of these pitchers need that that break. It just it, it lets your arm settle quickly. Whereas if you're having to go right back into pitch, 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 it's it's just overtaxing. And I know player safety is involved having a conversation with the MLB on this pitch clock. So we'll see what comes out of that. But anyway, let's get into uh, hey, to more. Before oh, go I'm going to cut yeah. you off one more time. That's uh, the report came out of actually about Alec Manoa and it's about that pitch clock. Every time he throws, it's so quick that he gets injured between every pitch. So that's why he can't locate his shoulder gets hurt. It's too quick for him. They need to fix it. They're ruining Alec Manoa's career and it's not fair. Yeah. I think there's a lot more going on than uh, the pitch clock for Alec Manoa. I think it's that he's targeting people's heads is I think what it is. Uh, but anyway, getting into the, the third game tomorrow, I had them actually losing this game. Carter had them winning, but he Carter also had them losing yesterday's game. So, Carter, what are we sitting at for the uh, – or, uh, no, I guess, you know what, we'll do that tomorrow. I don't want to yeah, tease I, what we're at yet. I, I, I will say you are winning. I'll give I'll give them that, but we'll give over a full breakdown tomorrow. So, the Blue Jays have, obviously, Yusei Kikuchi coming off a huge start against the Yankees. Looked unbelievable. His command was there. Something that a lot of Toronto Blue Jays pitching staff could use from Yusei Kikuchi. But we'll get into this actual series and players that matter. So, with Yusei Kikuchi, I'm, I'm pretty fired up for him. I think he's going to continue his success against the Mariners lineup. That struggled a little bit this series. I think that's mostly due to the Toronto Blue Jays' unbelievable pitching, whether it is compared to the uh, Mariners hitting because they do have some guys again I say that their line doesn't scare me but they do have some guys that are 
serviceable that can hit the baseball like Mitch Garver, Mitch Hanniger. They got guys throughout this order that are pretty good players. They just don't really, other than Julio Rodriguez, for me, they don't have that star factor that really pops out in this lineup that's going to do damage. But yeah, and then you got uh, Logan Gilbert on the other side, I believe, right? And he's been so right. far pretty decent, uh, yeah. pretty much up to his standard, I'd say. It's 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 decent enough. Uh, you know, his ERA is a three five five going against Kikuchi's, who's sitting at a two seven nine so Our far dog. through two Let's appearances, go. which is great for him. I'm I'm really happy to see him have continued success. Hopefully, he can continue that through this game. But the Logan Gilbert, I mean. You know what? Going into this series, I was sort of worried about the Mariners pitching and, and if our team was able to handle that. And we've shown against two really good MLB pitchers, not necessarily that they've been fantastic this year so far, but consistently over the past few years have been good. And so I think if the Jays can keep going and jump on uh, Gilbert early, like I said, we needed to do the, the game before, uh, we might see some work success from this Toronto Blue Jays team. Well, it's so much easier to pitch, especially for a guy like you say, Kikuchi, that usually is a little bit harder on the command usually does have some starts where he does lose a little bit so with the blue jays scoring early in this last game i know they had runs in the second i think the fourth inning as well the game before they're scoring early it helps the pitchers mental so much just being able yeah. to pitch ahead and just having that uh mental state in the back of your head saying that hey i can make a mistake i don't want to but if i do make a mistake it's not the end of the world my offense will back me up so that's a huge thing for the Toronto blue jays team and I'm going to say if they sweep the Seattle Mariners, I might be all the way back in on this team. Seven and six would look pretty good to me after this uh, the start of the season. Again, that road trip, I was pretty down in the dumps. But when you're looking at it, you take a step back. You had the Rays, the Astros, you had the Yankees. These are good teams. The Mariners are a team that I think a lot of people have at least pushing for the playoffs, definitely being in contention. So we can sleep, sweep the Seattle Mariners with this pitching staff. I know they have struggled a little bit the first two throughout the first couple of games of the season, but I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty content. I'd be pretty happy for this Toronto Blue Jays team. You told me in the first 13 games, we beat seven and six with these opponents. I would take that. Yeah, I'm I'm 100% with you. And I, don't get me wrong. I think we got lucky with some wins early on. But that's baseball. Over 162 games, you're going to get a few wins maybe that you don't deserve. And you're going to get some losses probably that you don't deserve either. So at the end of the day, seven and six, if we could go, I'd be I'd be over the moon happy. Um, I put out a tweet asking uh, today if if everybody thinks that we are back because it's it's getting close. These these wins get me excited. And you know what? I think as a fan, you have to take a step back, like you said, once in a while and try to still watch for enjoyment try to find those moments in the season because you, you you could always look at these games through a negative lens um but if you take a step back uh, maybe watch start watching game to game just watch the, some of the good things that happen try to go into it with a positive mindset and i think that's what i've did in this series after the first game the second game i was sort of like okay let's see what this team's got and i found myself getting way more excited i was i was getting fired up Bo Bichette's home run today really got got me going. I was I was I was elect I was feeling electric. So speaking of that home run, we didn't really go over it a lot. It didn't even look like he tried to get that out. It kind of looked like he just like get one and play, and all of a sudden it is out in a hurry. Like when I was look watching that just uh, live, obviously I thought he was like maybe getting a double down the line or something like that. But no, he uh, he got all of that baseball to say the least. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was it was nice. It's nice. It's nice to see, and I think. That's what's so much better for Blue Jays fans when they are able to string together a few wins. It gives us some some positive affirmation, I guess, instead of when, you know, the first bunch of games this season, I think everybody was pretty down and out. We just have to remember, this is a long season. Things are going to go up and down. Things are going to go horribly wrong. There might be a crazy injury. There might This team might do amazing things. So just, just take a step back. I know we got a ton of comments saying how bad this team is. They're not coming back. They're not going to do anything. That's all not part of the Toronto I... Blue Jays experience, though. You're really yes. high on the Toronto Blue Jays wins, yes. and you're really low on the Toronto Blue Jays lows, which they make it pretty tough not to be, though, because the way the Toronto Blue Jays lose is often unbearable to watch, and the way the Toronto Blue Jays win, the highs are so high. So that's why uh, it's it's definitely mentally straining, to say the least, to be a Toronto Blue Jays fan. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's going to be a fun game. They got an off day, which should help them out a little bit. Maybe they got the Rockies, which should be at least two out of three. You got to hope. So yeah, you'd think so. And and maybe, maybe an off day here isn't what they need after, you know, being able to put together s some good days. Maybe it's, maybe it's a bad thing. They're going to catch um, some fire and the flames going to be put out on the off day, but you know what? There's so many sports going on. I wanted to mention for you guys to check out 
uh, Locked On's new 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And it's also available now on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV uh, channels app, which, you know what, I, I know I've said during the Fire TV ad, it is awesome to see you on there as well. So Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, 24/7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app as well. So, Carter, uh, I think, you know, I, I want to thank everybody again so much for watching and tuning in. It's it's it, It's been a blast being able to cover this team, the highs, the lows, the in-betweens, the the not knowing, the uh, the getting screwed over by Toronto uh, Blue Jays media and, you know, lying to me. Everything that's happened this season so far, it's been a blast. Check us out on Twitter, Braden 5 Wasco, Carter first too, also on Instagram and TikTok, Locked On Blue Jays. And a lot of you guys aren't subscribed, so make sure you drop a sub to us as well so we stay at the top of your page, and it helps us out as well. Carter, want to say anything before we get out of here? Let's sweep a series. Let's get uh, over 500 for the first time this year. We're ready for it.